Welcome back. We are on the Somebody Loves You channel, and this is the Straight Talk Show. We're going to be talking about a lot of things. I got Pastor All in the studio with us today. What's up? Hey, what's up? How are you? Why are you I smiling? Just, I'm all messed up. My throat, <laughs> I think I, I got to quit smoking because it's really bad. <laughs> well, well, a lot of people like these shows because we're able to connect with the, the audience that is out there that has grown a huge over the years. God has used Somebody Loves You in so many people's lives, obviously through the radio for many years. And now as we've expanded through YouTube and different channels. So um, it's great to hear all the feedback that we're hearing and we want to continue to hear from you. Raul, you just got back recently from a conference um, in Hawaii and the conference theme, I wanted to kind of talk about some of those aspects because I think it would be a good show. And the theme was the church, the Holy Spirit and revival. Raul, when you look at the church today, where is your burden what is the state of the church right now? Well, I think the church has fallen backwards instead of going forward. And I think what's taking place is we are too busy. We get our eyes on so many different things than keeping our eyes on Jesus. And so the church can't progress. You know, the church has to really come back to the, to the foundation of the scriptures. And we need to stand by the scriptures and teach by the scriptures. And then the church can grow and develop into the true church. You know, when it comes to the purpose of the church, I think this is always important to define because, you know, there's a lot of people out there that they look at the church from the outside perspective, from the world. Maybe they, they look at it as maybe they're closed-minded, they're not up to speed with what's going on in the world today. But when we look biblically, I know Ephesians 4 is the key portion of Scripture, but what is the purpose of the church? Well, the purpose of the church, number one, what I, what I see it, the way I see it is to teach the Word of God. You know, to, well, once you have evangelism, people get like Billy Graham, you know, going to uh, different uh, evangelistic events. Once a person gets saved, you know, they just don't go home. We give them a Bible, you know, we give them a little counsel, and a lot of people stop there. You know, but I think that a real church that really cares for souls, they're going to get saved, they're going to get counsel, and they're going to get taught the Word of God. You know, I'm glad you brought that up because we've talked about this often when it comes to pastoring and ministering to people, that the greatest counsel actually should be from the services where the Word of God is being taught. When somebody comes to the Lord at an, a big event or yeah. even here in the services, they're encouraged for a few things. They're encouraged to pray. They're encouraged to know God's Word. Uh, they're also encouraged to go to a church that teaches the Word of God and to share your faith. And I think you brought this up yesterday. It's like if one or two of those things are off, you're going to be off. Yes. And so those that don't make the church a priority in their life, they're, they're missing out. You said it before, the church teaching the Word of God. But what happens is Chuck had this philosophy um, the sheep beget the sheep. When you are teaching them, they start to do evangelism. You've seen that over the years, right? But you know something important? Nobody had to tell me that I had to read. Mm -hmm. Nobody told me that I had to go to church. You know, when I got saved, I said, okay, where can I go so that I can be taught? I want to learn about Jesus. So my mother-in-law for years had told me about Calvary Chapel. So I went ahead and went to Calvary Chapel. And, man, it was like a light turned on, and I thought, wow, this is where I need to be because they're teaching me the Word of God. They're uh, building me up. They're edifying, you know, the Lord. But at the same time, they're exhorting me because Romain was there. And I thought, you know what? I want to do this. And when I did that, I want my friends to have that too. So everybody that got saved, I took them to Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa. And we begin to develop, to grow, to where the Lord put a call in our lives that we see today. And I think that's what's like in the church today, that friends don't care about friends. You know, they only care about themselves. And most people did in the church, they're uh, somewhere else. You know, they're doing things they shouldn't be doing. So the holiness of God is broken. And so when the, holy, the holiness of God is broken, then there is no church. You know, you have something you mentioned right now, and it just came to uh -huh. my mind, because we just had a friend that visited us um, from Australia. And from his perspective, being here, what he was blown away by was the balance of the importance of the Word of God, but also being open to the Spirit of God. You know, as time has gone on, and that's really the... the that philosophy with the Calvary Chapel movement, because years past, you've seen those that are like are heavy on um, the, the the gifts of the Holy yeah. Spirit and just um, emotionalism Prophecy in a lot of ways, and then they don't have a heavy emphasis on the Word. 
or you have those that have a heavy emphasis upon the word, but they don't believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And I thought that was cool to hear his perspective of that, that clear balance. And really, it has nothing to do with a philosophy of Gabby Chapel or any of those things. But you know what? It's what, really the work of God. Yeah, what, what happens is when you study God's word, there's that balance. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're going to hit prophecy and hit the Holy Spirit. You're going to hit every topic you know, or major doctrine in the Bible where people will be able to develop, to grow, and to have answers for people, which today the church has no answers. Yeah, no, it's important. And for um, the church, I think one of the, the main things is like sometimes they f people focus on the wrong things. They get caught up in politics. They get caught up in other things that maybe take their attention away from what the purpose of the church is. You've seen that probably over the years, right? Yeah, in going to Hawaii this time, I, I've gone to many conferences, but this time they asked the board to be there and mm -hmm. other people to come and teach. And what was so cool, what I saw, is that the teaching it was balanced, and every one of us didn't say, "Okay, Don, you're going to teach or that." You're going to teach. Everybody had their teaching. As a matter of fact, uh, what's his name? Uh, we had the same text. R Randall and I had the same text, but we taught it totally different. You know, and that's what's good about the Word of God. You know, if my people, which are called by my name, shall pray and humble themselves before me, what do they say? He's going to add. He's going to add to the church. Things are going to happen in the church. And so Randall and I, we were laughing because we couldn't believe we had the same text. But what I saw in that conference is people that came. It's like they've been taught, but there's something new because we spoke about revival too. I don't see revival. In Hawaii, I don't see revival in California. I don't see revival in any one of the states of America or the world. Yeah, yeah churches are developing. Churches are growing. But churches are closing, too. And one of the things that I perceive, that if a church doesn't reach out to the young people, the church will die, no matter what you do. Because the youth are the ones that are bringing other youths. Yeah. You know, and going to that theme and revival as you're bringing up, and I, I want to hit upon that really, really heavy, um, and which is obviously connected. You brought, brought this up, the work of the Holy Spirit. Yes. The Holy Spirit, the Bible says, Jesus spoke that the Holy Spirit will be with you, he will be in you, and upon you. Uh, the with experience is when you're starting to feel bad for what you've done. There's conviction that's starting to take place in your lives. It, it, the Holy Spirit begins to show you the reality of sin and your need of a Savior. And when you ask Christ into your life, the Holy Spirit comes in your heart. You become a, a new creation in Christ Jesus. Your desires change. Your focus changes. Your perspective of a lot of things change. And you have the hope that is given to us in our hearts. And then the upon experience, that which is empowers you for ministry, uh, the gifts and the calling of God are so very important. And that's why we have to encourage people to be led by the Spirit of God, especially in the days we're living today. We're all, there, yeah. there are a lot of challenges for people that want to live a life that is set apart for the Lord because there's so many things that are trying to pull our attention away. Yeah, you know, one of the problems, situations that I perceive and I see is uh, Ephesians 4.30, the grieving of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit is grieved, He cannot operate. You know, there has to be repentance. You go back and you read Wesley, you read, I mean, uh, Ed, uh, Edwards and all these guys, you know, Moody, and you see that there was a, a, the world was lost, but what they prayed about, what they taught brought conviction to the people. I don't see conviction today. If there was conviction from the pulpit today, the world would be different. America would be different. Yeah. And you see sin so so rampant for sure. Um, we do we hear horrible things. Yeah. You see horrible things in, in some other ministries. You see people that um, there's sexual abuse. You know, it seems like you see them every month or so. There was just a murder right here at the college. You know, yeah. in Fullerton. Yeah, there's a lot of things that we are facing. When the Holy Spirit does a genuine work, a person's changed. It's not something that's forced. It's not a bunch of rules and regulations. Okay, you're a Christian now. Don't drink, don't smoke, don't right. do this, don't do right. that. No, we don't do no, that. Yeah. Nobody does that. Yeah. You shouldn't do that. It's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit brings conviction and starts clean, um, cl you know, cleaning that person up. That's what the work of God does. Well, that's why last night, you know, I was teaching chapter 10. The Lord has really laid on my heart, you know, to talk about the Holy Spirit, the benefits of the Holy Spirit. You know, all the way to chapter 2, chapter 4, chapter 8, chapter uh, 10, chapter 19 of the, book of, uh, the book of Acts, how the Holy Spirit went out and the church was never the same. The church had results. 
The church doesn't have results today. The church has gone backward instead of forward. Well, I think anybody that has a genuine relationship with the Lord can attest to what you're talking about. I mean, I can recall when I came to the Lord coming from a background of drugs and alcohol and addicted and in a bad place and then never able to get sober and God gets a hold of your heart and he starts changing your desires. And when the word of God is working in your heart, you start being conviction as you're sitting on a Sunday morning or Wednesday night or whatever time you go to church. Maybe things start coming to your remembrance. Say, I got to get this out of my life. You know what? I got this pornography in my home. You know what? I think I might have some old drugs like um, paraphernalia like in my closet. Those things would happen to me um, as I was sitting here in the Word of God, and those things start to be, be removed. Um, when we talk about revival, and you mentioned it right now, and as I've read back on some aspects of revival over the last 100, 200 years, everything is similar in this. It begins with a, a, a prayer, a burden for, for the lost. And when people come to salvation, there is repentance, number one, brokenness, acknowledgement of sin. You've taught on repentance for so many years, um, and you have your heart's been burdened. What is repentance? What does that mean for the, the who's watching right now? Well, repentance is a turning away. You know, you're going one direction, you turn the sec- you know the other direction, which means you do a whole 180. You turn around. But what happens also in repentance? I mean, look at how many people have done that circle. You know, and the reason because they didn't get into the word, they didn't pray, they didn't do all those things that you talked about. So they go right back to their sin. And I mean, Christians, you know, Christians that have come here that sit under the teaching of God's word, but there's no commitment their heart is not right and instead of really saying you know what lord i've came here and i've heard the word of god i want to repent you know something's trapped them where they can't get out of it you know it could be a woman it could be drugs or be alcohol whatever and it's not until you submit he said lord i'm sick and tired of this thing lord help me and you really cry out to the lord to help you then true repentance god and then fruit comes through repentance and you're never the same well when you just say the word revival or revive, you're speaking about something that was dead that needs to be brought alive. alive. That's what revive means, yes, right? Right. Um, you've mentioned many times in the book of Revelation. Uh, I think you just mentioned this last night, where it says seven times he will hear. You see, here's the spirit of God. You know to listen. Um, but there's also is it the church of Ephesus? Yeah. Return to your first love. Yes. That's what happens, right? People get cold when it comes to their um, their Christian life, growing in the Lord. But you notice there are two people are active. They're doing you know what they're supposed going to do. Going through the motions. Yes, going through the motions. Yeah. But there's no true emotion that the Lord gives to us. Yeah, exactly. So he's saying, yeah, I, I know your works. I know you're doing all these things. But this is what I have against you. You've left your first love. And what I love about that text, though, is that it doesn't just leave you there. It gives you instruction on how to change it. Yes. Remember from where you've fallen and then return and do the first work you did in right. the beginning. It's not the first time. It's now returning back the second time. Right. And, you know, for those that are out there right now, because there might be pe- people watching right now, wrong that had this dramatic conversion, got to do work in their life, then maybe either trials or temptations or their lack of um, diligence in growing in the Lord. Now they find themselves drifted. How do they return back? How do they get their life back in order? Simple. Repent. <laughs> you come back to the Lord, you know, God knows what you've done. Do you know what you've done? And then coming back, do you really mean it? Is there going to be a real change in your life? And can people see that you've turned around and have fruit in your life? That's repentance. Yeah, and that's what the world needs. Jesus says you are to be the, the salt and the light. You are to be a, a purifying influence. Um, we've talked about this before, like, and again, everything starts at the top, your relationship with the Lord, and everything starts to impact everything. It impacts your family. It impacts your ability to witness. Sometimes people throw in that word evangelism. That could be a scary word to some people because they think that it's them preaching on a street corner, you know, on, a, on top of a box. and like, oh, I can't do that. Well, true evangelism really is having a heart for people, being able to communicate God's word, God's truth. But a lot of times evangelism can just be building relationships in your community and the places that you go, and God opens up door of opportunity. Yeah, and I mean, you've seen it, I've seen it, you know, where the church today, it wants to get back. 
You know, like you said, evangelism is great. But I, like I said last time, how many people listening, watching, have? Re- when is the last time you listened somebody to the Lord? Yeah. You would be surprising, even like last night, how many people have not led someone to the Lord, and yet somebody led you to the Lord. Yeah. I think the church, if you really want to see growth, if you really want to see an expansion of the church, young guys... Young girls, you need you need to notice take the gospel to people, and then God is going to do a whole new work and raise up a new generation. That's what happened in my generation. You know, I mean, we had the fifties, the sixties, and all of a sudden the seventies came along. The hippie movement, there was re- revival. I mean, guys would not they they wouldn't have to be told, hey, you guys go over here and with us. They would go automatically to their neighborhoods, to their friends, to their enemies, and go out on the streets and see people get saved. Because when the Holy Spirit works in your heart, your heart becomes God's heart. God, the way God sees the world, that compassion, that that uh, heart for souls, all that changes your direction of life. And if you are not connected to the Lord, then your eyes are just focused upon the things of this world. And before you know it, the material things. You've taught a text, and that's always rang true. I mean, you've taught it so many times over the years, and it's in Mark chapter 4, the different hearers. Um, and there's three, there's three different, there's four different, I yeah. believe. Um, but those that have those that emotional experience, those that when trials come, they get caught up. But then there's those that really hear and they, they produce fruit. They produce, yes. You've seen that, right? You see that in the church? Uh, you see it in the church. You know what was funny? When I came back from Vietnam, I was stationed you know, in the hospital up in Oakland. Yeah. And on the weekends, I got to go to Hashbury, you know. And when I went to Hashbury, I was kind of blown away because the, the hippie movie was starting. Oh, that was huge. Yeah. Up in San Francisco. Yes. Area. And I saw, I saw the negative where later on I saw the positive. And I was blown away that in every store you went into, drugs were sold. And people walking around, drugged up, man. It's just incredible to see. And go back for me, because I never took drugs, you know. I never drank in that way in any way. But I thought, wow, you know, something's happening. Then the rebellion against us and the war, you know. But it, it, it had to take that for God to do that in order to get us back on track, for God's Holy Spirit to move into the church, to move in the streets, to move in, in the highways and byways, to see what I saw, amazing what God did. Be- and, you know, as we're talking about those, you're, you're bringing up, like, big social issues that were out there, right? The hippie movement, there was a animosity towards government and authority. Yes. There was re- this rebellion, this rebellion a- aspect uh, of so many people's lives. Um, and then God's work, the work of the Holy Spirit worked in such a powerful way, it impacted the church, but then it impacted the world. It impacted communities. And as we look at our world today, Raul, we see a lot of things taking place. We see divisiveness. Look at our nation. Yeah. Um, we see the media that has the ability to communicate so much information. We see a, a nation that's inundated with information. Pornography is major. Um, sex trafficking is reality. There's so many evils that are in this world. And I think a lot of people, even if they're not walking with God, they have moments where they're like, man, this, what's wrong with this world? Like, th- th- this is horrible. But the solution to it is this, a work of God's spirit. Yes, and uh, I, I, I was thinking about this too, that when you look at the movement of God, you know, it, they came along, the hippies, then the yuppies. You know, and as you go through progression of years, man, you begin to see the fallout. I mean, big time. I mean, I look at that all the time. I look at the 80s, I look at the 90s, I look at the year 2000, and up to the present time. And since then, nothing's happened. And I really believe in my own heart, the reason it hasn't happened is because the church hasn't really spent time in prayer. Calvary Chapel started on our knees, prayer. The hippie movement started on prayer. I mean, everything that we did was on prayer. And today, you know, if you visit churches, you can ask, well, how much time do you spend on prayer? And I said this from the pulpit, how much time you spend on your phone, your iPad, and on your computer? And when you look at that, man, I would be ashamed to see that prayer doesn't really mean anything to people. I really believe that if we put away, there's a balance. If there's a balance on those areas, I believe revival will come. You know, bringing up revival, and as you've looked, um, over years, hundreds of years, they don't last forever. Nope. Right? 
They, they, there is this revival that takes place. People return. There's brokenness. 20, 30 there's years repentance, and then repentance, right? Uh, 20, 30 years. And then carnality, carnality happens yes. or a- apathy yes. where they, you know, God doesn't become a priority to their lives anymore. Maybe they're not passing on to their children. The children of Israel went through this. We see this in the Old Testament, waves of obedience and waves of disobedience. When you're bringing up for the listening audience that is out there and you bring up terms like hippies and yuppies, you know, when you're talking about hippies, you're talking about like mid, late 60s to the to the 70s and what right. took place at that moment. And then the 80s, yuppies, 90s, it, where yeah. people, uh, there was a lot of success in America, yes. right? Yes. Financially, yes. in a lot of ways, a lot of things expanded. And when we and when, they collapsed. when you make re- <laughs> reference to the yuppies, it was they went back to like their normal lives. They went back to not having God as a priority. Maybe they were successful materially in a lot of ways, but then it went down. Yeah, and not only the, the, the prosperous, but you know, you look at people, you talk to people, you know, there was that coldness. You know, you lose that uh, excitement. You lose that uh, love for God. And, and when you talk to people, it's not the same. They're not excited. Well, yeah, you know, I go to church. You know, and yeah, we study the Bible. But there's not, yeah, I go to church, man. And you know what's going on in the church? The church is blowing up, man, and music and everything is just incredible. So that's a little revival. Yeah. You know, so people are going to come to the church. But when the church begins to die, nobody will come. What do you see now? You know, saying that as you've seen, you know, we've talked about what's taken place in hundreds of years ago, but just the current time, you've seen it through the 60s, 70s, 80s, and now where we're at here today. How does somebody stay riding that wave of having revival in their own personal life? Uh, being in the Word, being in prayer, waiting upon the Lord, uh, sharing with people your heart, and then sitting, you know, sitting for a while and hearing from God. Uh, what does God say to you? Not to everybody else. What does God say to you personally? What does God want to be? He might call you to be a Jeremiah. He might call you to be a Moody or whatever. So you got to be open. And that's happened. That's happened in the past. Chuck was called. You know, and I can name guys in the 70s, the 80s, and 90s that God has called and God has used them even to the present time. There are guys that God has called and you can tell God's called them by the results that you see in their lives, by what you see in people's lives all the way through teaching, preaching, whatever it is. And it's incredible. Some of the traits of revival, like we mentioned, obviously repentance. It's the acknowledging man, I've drifted from God or sin has ravaged my life. I don't want to live this way any longer. And you ask the Lord for forgiveness. And then you change the direction of your life by being led by the Spirit of God, which in the same aspect of repentance is brokenness, humility, you know, being teachable, being moldable, like, Lord, whatever you have for me, that's what I want in my life. And then the the effects of that is holiness. It is a life that is set apart. Those things that you used to find comfort in, maybe watching filthy stuff, maybe listening to filthy stuff, or you living a way a certain way. Now all of a sudden there's that sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that the Lord that we serve is holy. What is holiness? <laughs> to be separate. I mean to just give yourself fully 100% to the Lord and staying away from evil. And making sure you take your life and you do exactly what the scripture says. Yeah, you're going to trip, you're going to fall, but there's conviction. And you can see God's holiness. I mean, I said chapter 6. I mean, God had to deal with Isaiah. Isaiah was not a, a bad sinner, but God dealt with him to make sure that God's message was going to be given the way God wanted to give it. That's important. And then I thought of something else, you know. Pastor Chuck Smith, you know, God had called him to teach the Word of God. But at the same time, people wanted to use Chuck in the hippie days. And Chuck saw that. By the way, one, a couple times for a season, he had no worship. He became the worship. And the reason is because the musicians became hirelings, money, power and the worship was lost and the worship was part like the old testament you know the guys leading the worship into the battle and if you don't have that there is no battle you're going to get defeated holiness holiness in ministry yes in leaders yes and that's what we were saying before Mm -hmm. whether it's pastors whether it's worship leaders whether it's whatever any aspect of serving in Mm -hmm. the, the ministry children's ministry aspect there has to be holiness in the camp 
Peter is led by the Spirit of God in his letter and says that judgment starts in the house of God. Totally. The world's going to be judged, but judgment first starts in the house of because God. Because so much is given, much more is required. Yeah. That's and, us. And it's sad because we have seen, and the world has seen, corruptness in, in churches and in the oh, world. Yeah, totally. and, 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 and hypocrites in yeah. a lot of ways, like they like to throw Even that word around. Even at the time. Yeah. But the healing aspect is the same. For the world and for the church, never it's, changed. It's brokenness, it's repentance, it's a return to holiness, and then God can move because it becomes a natural thing. You said nobody tells you what to do. When you really have an encounter with the Lord, it changes the direction of your family, the way you treat your wife. For the women, the way they treat their husband, the way they raise their children, how they are obedient to their own personal call upon their lives. It becomes, and that's what is being led, that is what a picture of being led by the Holy Spirit yes. is. You know, uh, can you imagine in this church, okay, or other churches, if you took every person that was not holy and said you can return next Sunday, man, you would have almost nobody here. Yeah. I mean, that's the honest truth. You know, because holiness, you don't have to preach it. You can see it. In the church, you know, I can. I remember West Covina when, I mean, we started the church, and people were on fire for the Lord. And, and people that didn't want to be in holy, they left because the Holy Spirit convicted them. But today, they don't care. They come because maybe they're convicted about something. They come to do their good duty, you know, and you can see that in the church. But I think with us as Calvary Chapel, you know, Golden Springs, you know, we really have to spend some time in prayer. I really believe that. I think we have to wait and look at every ministry. You know, like the the, the ministry with the kids, is, it's really moving forward, man. I mean, really cool. And every every ministry has to be examined, and every ministry has to be rebuilt, Rebuilt. If you want to see revival, you have to rebuild it. This is one thing that Chuck taught us. Don't have friends in the ministry because when you have to remove them, it will hurt you. Yeah. And so it's important to do that. It's important to take inventory in every aspect yes, of, of totally. your own personal life, totally. of ministry. Yes. Because a lot of times things can go stale. You can't, or, and it's lost its purpose. You got to be, why do we do this? Yeah. What is the purpose yeah. of this? Um, and that's why I'm glad that we're able to, to talk about these subjects here today. Yes. Why the church? What's the purpose of the church? We, we, we mentioned it in the beginning of the program. It is the edifying of the body of Christ, building which up. literally means building up. Yes. It means teaching them that they, lives might change, that their, life, their changed lives affect other people's lives and the church reproduces itself. And they don't become the Corinthian church. <laughs> you know? Corinth, that's crazy. You, the, you know, and as we, we got a couple more minutes, but when you bring up the Corinth church, I think there's a lot of lessons to be learned by that because a revival took place in Corinth. Yeah. And it yeah. was a church that was came. birthed in a very pagan uh, area. Uh, yeah. And yet, as a couple years went by, now all this carnality happens, and this is the, the downfall that happens in, in many churches, is when they allow the world to come inside the church. They no longer, they've lost their focus. They're not in, impacting the communities. The communities are impacting them. But you know, too, one person did that. Mm -hmm. Paul the Apostle. Yep. It wasn't 15, 20, 30. That's why I talk about revival. One person that is holy, one person that believes in revival, went into a city. I've been to that city. Went into the city of Corinth. And to be able to turn around and to have revival, that's what God wants today in the current church. And as we say church, you know, Pastor Rob said this multiple times, a church is not a, a church building. A building, yeah. You know, with a little steeple and right. everything. No, the church is... Us. It's the body of Christ. And for a, the church to impact people, they need to be, number one, born again in the Holy Spirit. Yes. For those that are born again in the Holy Spirit, they need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Yes. They need to make decisions that are based upon the conviction of the Holy Spirit, yes. the, 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 the assurance that God is leading them in decisions that they're making so that there is peace. Because when the Holy Spirit's moving, there's peace. There's oh, no total striving. Peace. Yeah, no striving. Uh -uh. And that's what the church needs today. And then last, revival. Yes. Um, I think it was Leonard Ravenhill that wrote a book, Why Revival well, yeah. Tarries, uh -huh. or in the word tarry just means why does it, why is it lagging? Why is it not, why is it taking so long? Answer that question, Raul, as we close. Why does revival tarry? 
because of sin. <laughs> you know what we need? We need the book of Acts chapter 2. That's what we need. I mean, in conclusion, I would say let's go back to chapter 2 of Acts to see what God wants. 120 people from 120, the first day, 3,000 people got saved, and men that took off all the way to the book of Acts. And that's what Paul wrote all his epistles. So thankful that you're able to tune in today on Somebody Loves You Straight Talk. We'll be back next month with a new episode. We'd love to hear from you. Maybe um, put some things in the comments of some topics you want us to talk about. Well, thanks a lot. Maranatha. God bless you guys. All right. Take care. Peace.